The Great Mathematician, Sing High, Sing Crow by Nancy Krulik is a fun chapter book for young readers that playfully illustrates the many ways math is all around us, plus is filled with lots of puns and other wordplay. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Ahead, we'll explore the book, and I'll talk with Nancy Krulik about the inspiration behind it. Nancy Krulik is an international best-selling author of more than 200 books for children. Her book series include Katie Kazoo Switcheroo, George Brown, Class Clown, Magic Bone, Princess Pulverizer, and Ms. Frogbottom's Field Trips. She joins us to talk about the latest in her great Mathematician series, Sing High, Sing Crow. Nancy, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Thank you. This is the third book in the great Mathematician series. So tell us about the series. What inspired it? Well, um, when my son was about 10 years old, I got a call from his teacher. And, you know, first I'm like shaking. What did he do now? But he called to tell me he got 100 on his math test. And I said, well, that's very nice. But why are you calling me? And he said, oh, no, that's not the best part. The best part is Zach said that Ian got 100 on his test because Ian's grandfather is a mathematician. <laughs> My father was a math education professor. And uh, so I guess that's what he meant. But this was about 20 years ago. And um, I wrote it in my journal and I just put the word mathematician. And then when uh, an editor came to me and said, do you have any ideas for a series? I thought, you know, I think I do. And uh, so, that was how The Great Mathematician got started. Um, what I really wanted in these books was for kids to see that math is not just in the classroom. It's everywhere. Um, and the most important part about learning math is how you use it in your everyday life, how you use it to problem solve. Um, and problem solving was my dad's big, that was his, his big thing, was that math can be used in your everyday life. And that's what I'm trying to do in these books. So for what age would you recommend this series of books? Um, I say K through three and also parents because there's, you know, I've hatched a whole lot of excellent puns that might make parents laugh as well. Yeah, I noticed that, that you, I, I figure you must be keeping that adult audience in mind as well who might be reading along with the child um, because <laughs> it's filled with wonderful puns and I love that. In fact, one of the chapters is titled Cheap Trick, yes. which so the kids <laughs> may not get, but the adults reading the book would pick up on. I, I think they will, um, but Cheap Trick also works as a band name in this book, especially the way I've spelled cheap. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think as a parent, I want to laugh with my kid. Um, and, and the kids all get the egg puns. They, they, you know, I've got a lot of grade A egg puns in there. So um, there's something for everybody. And I think as a parent, you're more likely to want to read the book with your kid if it's going to make you laugh as well. So as I mentioned, this is the third book in this mm -hmm. series. So what's the story that readers are going to find here? Well, um, there's music and math. And basically what's going on is... The chickens are in the coop, and there's a bunch of members of the crow family. So there's blue jays and magpies and crows and ravens, and they have taken up residence in the tree above the coop. And they have named themselves the Crow Family Band, and they rehearse at night. And to me, in my mind, there's sort of like a heavy metal band. So you can imagine it's sort of like having a garage band next to you. Um, and they don't sleep. And so Chirpy has to find a way to learn math and music and then apply it to um, the problem that they're having in the coop. And she does, she does it quite well because she's the great mathematician. So she's a superhero who uses math and science to solve problems. Could you read the first part of the book that introduces us to the Crow Band? Sure. Um, it's the first chapter is called Be Quiet. Feathers tickle, feathers fly, but I've got a feather in my eye. Chirpy curled up in a tight little ball. She covered her ears with her wings, but nothing she did blocked out the noise of the crows singing their song up in the trees. This feather itches, it makes me cry. Feathers don't belong inside your eye. 
It was dark in the coop, but all the chickens were wide awake. This feather makes my eye raw. Caw, caw, caw. No one could sleep through that. Be quiet up there, the rooster, Sir Waddles shouted to the crows. Don't you know it's nighttime? We're having band practice, one of the crows answered him. Rock and roll bands practice, and it's loud. And the practices are at night, another added. And I, I just have to show you Char Charlie Alder's great illustrations. I mean, she's just a brilliant illustrator. So that's just a little taste. And uh, it goes on from there. And, and, yeah. and there's all sorts of things you learn about math. In fact, uh, there's the, the math in the music. But at one point in the book, they refer to uh, eating pizza and how fractions are delicious because there are slices of pizza. Right. Which, right. And that was introduced in book two, Have a Slice of Day. So I do continue and repeat the math lessons in each book because I think – Repetition is good, but also because it adds on to one another. You know, it's cumulative. So I want, you know, kids and teachers, I really do think that um, teachers can use these books in so many ways in their classrooms. Um, and that is very important to me because I come from a whole family of teachers. We call it the family business. So um, I wanted to give teachers something also that can um, make their lives a little more fun. I'm talking with Nancy Krulik about The Great Mathematician, Sing High, Sing Crow. And our conversation continues in a moment. If you're enjoying this discussion, please take a moment to subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you'll know when I post new interviews with authors. And thank you. It sounds like you had a lot of fun putting these books together. And, uh, oh, I'm having a blast. Lots of fun, puns and plays on words and, and fun names for the characters. You got Chirpy and Clucky and Quackers and, and all sorts of other characters. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Um, it's a lot of fun. I only write funny books. Um, I don't see the point in writing sad books. For me, I've always felt it's better to laugh than cry, particularly for this age group. Um, so I, I love writing and I love laughing. So I just put it all together. And making it a fun book this way, it's a, a book that kids are going to maybe want to read more than once, which is great because as you pointed out that repetition is important and they're learning things. And the best way to learn things, you not even realize you're learning things, but you're just enjoying the story right. and you pick these things up along the way. That's the goal. The goal is, is to make them love learning, to make them love reading, um, and to make them and make, make these favorite books that kids remember years from now. I mean, when I go to book club, book uh, fairs, and I see teenagers and college kids, and they're bringing me old books that I wrote and calling them vintage, which is a little nerve wracking, <laughs> but they remember them. And that makes me feel so wonderful because it means that it meant something to them. And I'm hoping these books will mean something to kids years from now. And at the back of each book, there's a little project with instructions that uh, kids can do. Tell us a bit about those. Yeah, I love hands-on. I love hands-on stuff. I think you learn so much. So um, in the back of, of the most recent book, kids can make their own tambourines and they can beat out the rhythms that are discussed in the book, which is fantastic. Um, in, in the pizza book, there's how to make, uh, little pizzas, little individual pizzas and use fractions to decide how many toppings you're going to put on them. And the first book, um, which is called hide and go beak, uh, they can build a simple machine because simple machines in science, as well as math are a big focus in this one. So it's again, applying what you've learned in a fun way. You, you mentioned the illustrator. Tell us a little bit more about the illustrator and the illustrations in these books. Yeah, um, Charlie Alder, she lives in England. So I've actually never met her, but she really, really gets the vibe of the books because the characters are just funny and they're cute. And, you know, so she, and actually what we've done, which is really wonderful is we've put yellow into the book. So it's really not just black and white, it's a three color process. And she's really, really smart in terms of knowing, she puts things in that I've never even 
thought of. At one point, I noticed she was putting in these eggs with just legs. That was hilarious to me. So then I started adding them into any art directions I would put into the book because I just thought they were so funny. Um, her animal characters are just brilliant and her birds are amazing. We were very, very lucky to get her because she's a very hot illustrator right now. So we were lucky. You've written over 200 books for mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. What is it you enjoy about writing for this audience? Um, I really love kids. Personally, if I don't look in the mirror, I feel like a kid anyway. I have seen no reason to write for grown-ups. I don't find them nearly as interesting as I find children. I think kids are open to more ideas. I think um, kids get my humor in a way that adults don't always. Um, and I, I just think it's important. I love reading. I grew up reading. everything. Every Sunday, I would be taken for a comic book. And then I would read books. And I, I read everything I could get my hands on. And I would love to encourage that, especially in kids who are reluctant readers. And I do find from parents and teachers that reluctant readers are very much attracted to my books, I think because of the humor. And that was going to be my next question, which you anticipated, and that is what advice you might have for parents of reluctant readers to help instill that love of reading. I don't think there's any kid that doesn't love reading. I think there's just a lot of kids who haven't found the right books. So find what your child loves and turn them on to books. There are books about every subject. Um, and I think if you find a subject that a kid would love, they'll read that book. They'll read that book. Um, I, I think just keep trying, figuring out, go to a bookstore and say, my child is into X. What kids' books at this level do you have about that? And that's kind of the gateway, you know? There may be kids that don't like math, but they love chickens and they love jokes. And the next thing you know, oh, this is how I could use fractions. Let's make these pizzas. Oh, I love music. I didn't realize I was learning math, you know. Um, so I think that's the answer is just find the right topic. And again, I'm glad you've thought about the adult audience as well, because if the kid wants to hear this book over and over again, and you're an adult that's reading the book along with them, you want to enjoy the book as well, <laughs> or you're not going to want to read that book over and over again. Right. So as someone who really enjoys a good pun, I, I had fun reading this book. <laughs> I'm so glad. So will we see more Mathematic Chicken books in the future? That's my hope. Um, I, I have some ideas for a fourth one. I cannot give you an answer at this time. I'm working on a lot of things, um, but I would certainly love to keep going with these books if possible. Um, you know, it, it, in the book industry, you never really know until they tell you, but I do have several ideas and several titles and lots of puns. So I'm ready when the publisher is. The book is The Great Mathema Chicken, Sing High, Sing Crow by Nancy Krulik. Nancy, thank you for talking with me today. Oh, thank you. I'm having a great time. Now, if you'd like to purchase The Great Mathema Chicken, I've placed a link for you in the description below. Thank you for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf. And if you'd like to see more videos about children's books and their authors, be sure to subscribe, like, and click on the bell to be notified about future programs. And if you're interested in books for young adult and older readers, be sure to check out my Some Books Considered channel. You'll find a link to that below as well. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading. <laughs>